Hey, Fuckland, you've heard us making water bets on the show. Do you want to get involved in that action? You want to make some fun water bets with your, your coworkers, your friends, your, your league mates? Head over to wheelofwater.com, grab the completely free app, start spinning the water, make some bets, and douse some people in water. to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from the FantasyJocks.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Well, I don't think being doused in water would be helpful to Jason right now. No, it would not. Jason is gone. (laughs) We let him go. (laughs) We put him down. We put him down. No, Jason's not here today. He's not feeling well. And uh, I think he was going to try to tough through it, but then he woke up and he had no voice at all. Which, to some, blessing. Sure. But. Uh, And I I cannot confirm or deny uh, his upcoming schedule of menus for, for next week after our lunch bet. So you're taking the victory over the Chicago defense? They had 10 points in our league. Yeah, but they scored. They had 10 fantasy points. I know, but I, I, w- I would be like taking the victory, but like with my tail between my legs, like kind of subtly realizing the fact that they didn't play that well. Well, uh, to be fair, they played fantastic for a, for an entire half. And then, I agree. And then Brian Hoyer broke his arm and ruined everything, which yeah. we, we will get into. So Right, that, that's going to be our quick question. We're going to talk through the game last night. 10 points is 10 points, my man. Would you, would you call 10 points from your defense in our league a good start? Yes. That was the bet. So you're picking his meals? Absolutely. Are you going to starve him? What are you going to do? Ooh, I didn't even think of that. You're, gonna, you're not going to do something for his own good? Mm, <laughs> I don't know. I got an entire weekend to figure this out. You should pick at least – you should do that one time. You should pick something terrible one time. All right. But, I mean, he's known to consume most anything <laughs> you put in front of him. We'll figure it out. Uh, but, yeah, he's out today. So it's Mike and Andy, the fantasy footballers, uh, minus one today, Friday, October 21st. Getting ready for the week seven games, other than last night's game, which we're going to get into in a second. It is Friday, which means oh, it's a it's Foot, Foot Clan Friday. Friday. It's a Foot Clan Friday. We give out a gift card to shopballers.com to a Foot Clan member from jointhefoot.com. And today's winner is Derek Dornfield. Dornfeld. That sounds like a superhero. Derek alias. Dorn, like the alias before yeah. he becomes. Yeah. What do you think Derek's actual superhero is? A beetle. He's a okay. He's the super beetle. He's a super beetle. Derek Dornfeld, uh, you seem to have won and lost today. <laughs> but congratulations, we'll send over your uh, your gift card. Uh, all right, so let's get right into it. Takeaways from last night's game. Um, death by a thousand cuts is the way I'm going to approach this. When you have 39 completed passes by Aaron Rodgers on 56 attempts, there's there's so much to take away from this game. Now, Ty Montgomery, Ty Montgomery was great. And thankfully, because role. whenever I pick a Thursday night guy as my start of the week, it's a little trepidatious because yeah. I don't want to come in here Friday and be wrong. I know. And then you had the Brian Hoyer broken arm, which absolutely buried all Bears players that game. If you are like me, I on Twitter, I poured one out digitally for my team because I lost in my money. Oh, is this for the Bears? <laughs> this is for all the Bears players. <laughs> For the rest of the season. All fantasy players who played Bears last this night. This is for you, Jordan Howard. Ugh. This is for you, Cameron Meredith. It's for you, Alshon. Three catch, Jeffrey. I'm going to miss everybody. I'm going to miss you all. It's a good call on this, this song, Mike. Uh, look, goodness sakes. I mean, I actually had regrets trading Cameron Meredith. This week, I was like, "Oh, what am I doing?" And, and apparently, I did the right thing. Yeah, well, you, sometimes you luck into th- some things, and sometimes you're in your money league and you play Brian Hoyer, and you lose the entire week in the second quarter of the Thursday night football game. Jordan Howard, seven for twenty-two, one second half touch. Alshon Jeffrey, three for thirty-three. Cameron Meredith, one for twelve. Yeah. I mean, if you want to pick anybody to smile, like crack a smile on, it'd be Kadeem Carey. Yeah. Ka- 10 for 48, and he caught a pass. Yeah, and people... And nobody played him. So you're saying, you know, what's going on with Jordan Howard? This uh, is this is jo- John Fox. 
Well, what number one is John Fox, and maybe, maybe just maybe looking back, so you you know who he played. He had those two monster games. That was Detroit and the Colts. Yeah, and now he's got Minnesota next week in a bye. So, so Jordan Howard owners, if you can trade him, which you probably can't, you can't. then you know I'm I, I regret not moving him, and I got two points out of him last night That's for my team. Part of fantasy football is you get these guys who who go hot, and you you got to make a decision. It can if go the keep, other way yeah, too. You want to keep them because they're going to turn into Odell Beckham from a couple years ago, or do you move them and try and strike while it's hot? Fifty nine or uh, fifty six attempts, thirty nine completed passes and only one completed pass to Jordy Nelson. Oof. He's seen his volume drop in recent weeks. You had the monster game from Devonta Adams. We didn't even know if was, he was going to play 13 for 132 and two touchdowns. I think everybody chose Montgomery or Cobb over him and Nelson. Yeah, Devonta Adams went from the Limburger to like a like, like a, a like a sharp cheddar. Yeah. That I enjoy very much. He even made a tough catch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Uh, though his first touchdown was spectacular. The one with the guy's arm right in the yeah. And, yeah. and look, you know, here's my takeaway from Green Bay. That that was not that was not it. There was there was no fix last night. It took him until the second half against a team that had zero offense right. to get it going. I mean, the, like I said, at the, for the first half, what was it, six to three? Or yeah. Going into the half. Yes. I mean the, the and then Bears, they came out and fumbled and went behind ten to six. It, exactly. The, things are not if right. If Hoyer was playing last night. Things are not right. Things would have been good. So, uh, Jordy Nelson, rest of the season. Severely concerned? No. Offense isn't going downfield? Uh, I would say concerned. He's not a he's not a one for me. Because No, no. He's certainly not a one. And he were, you were getting wide receiver one production because he was scoring, scoring so many touchdowns. All right, let's move. Let's move on here. Uh, before we get into the news, I want to remind you where you can find us on Twitter. It's at the FF Ballers. Make sure if you're listening on iTunes, you subscribe, review the show. We appreciate all of that. And uh, find us on YouTube. You can subscribe there as well if you want to watch the show. Put it on your big screen. Reminder, the the Sunday, the weekly Sunday Periscope will be one hour earlier this week. Yeah, so Mike will be on Periscope Sunday. Uh, Twitter's where you're going to get uh, get the heads up when that's live. Yeah, or follow us on Periscope Or follow as us well. on Periscope. So. And just real quick before we move on from Green Bay. Would you try and sell Rodgers, or are you going to hold him after that? Um, in season long, you know, if you can get old Aaron Rodgers value, that's what I mean. Like, sure, he had a I big mean, game. Maybe someone's oh, well, but Aaron he Rogers. also he also did what Aaron Rodgers can do, which is like have nothing for a half and still put up thirty five fantasy points. So, or you know, thirty three in our league or whatever it is. So, I don't know. I don't know what it showed me last night. I really don't. I almost don't count it towards. Any fix or not fix for Green Bay? It's so like wash. status quo. So right. here we go. News and notes from around the league. And I think I think those people that are like jumping on the bandwagon again. I mean, you have a one in six Bears team, and you were at home, and they had no offense. So this is not this is not a banner waving type of win. This is a you better have got this win. Oh yes, you know. Um, all right, we're going to jump into the news. Do you have any updates before we kind of get into the injury report? Fridays are when we we run through players real fast, tell you what we think, in or out, that type of situation. But is there anything outside of that framework that you want to update? I don't believe so. I was just doing a, a scour again to make sure there was no uh, outstanding news. But besides injuries, I think we'll just get to those. Oh, I see what you mean about Shady, too. We'll do that. Here we go. What's it going to be, McFly? Are you in? In or out, Joe Flacco and Carson Palmer. So I think Carson Palmer will play. He has mispracticed with uh, the hamstring issues. Joe Flacco is more concerning because it's actually his – it's his throwing shoulder, correct? Yes. So Yeah, he's got what, what, tennis tennis elbow. elbow. So Harbaugh is saying that Flacco should play, but you have to keep an eye on it. I mean, no one's – Flacco is just a streamer at this point, so – Stream elsewhere, I would say. All right, Latavius Murray, in or out? Going to go in. He's been practicing all week. Theo Riddick. He has not practiced all week, so I'm going to go without. If, uh, Dwayne Washington on that same backfield. I think he'll play. I think he's been limited in Does practice. Does he have an upside? Yeah, I think he has upside. The, it's. I don't think that Justin Forsett is the answer for them. And just going off of uh, you know 
the whispers in the bushes and trying to read the tea leaves, the, the team clearly likes Dwayne Washington more than Zach Zenner because they want Washington to play. They keep trying to give him the opportunity, but he's been hurt. All right, let's talk about uh, Sean McCoy. Breaking news. You got to go back to the beginning on this one. So yesterday, yesterday I we uh, was that was that yesterday? Or was that two days ago? I'm lost in this. Um, the report that he no, was, it was two days ago at lunch. Okay, so two days ago at lunch, it was he injured his hamstring. It was a mild to moderate strain. Breaking news. Then yesterday, the. All hell broke loose, and LaShawn McCoy was expected to miss multiple weeks. Gillisley became skyrocketed to the top of the waiver wire. Breaking news. (laughs) (laughs) Then today, his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, is on the radio saying, well, he's a game-time decision. He might play this week after all. Well, no, that was Associated Press. That oh. reported the game time decision. And then Drew Rosenhaus himself. Yeah, got then on the radio. Drew Rosenhaus came back out. And then, hold on, we got one more. Breaking news. LaShawn McCoy present. At the start of <laughs> practice today. <laughs> what is going on? So, we have no idea. Come on, man. So, LaShawn McCoy, he's a running back. <laughs> um, He has two legs. Plays for the Bills. It's freaking ridiculous. Um. That's all we got. <laughs> That's all we got for you. All right, let's move on to the wide receivers. Look, Odell Beckham, in or out? Okay, he's going to play. Just before we move on, I know that the players, they don't give a crap. The coaches don't care about fantasy football. But fantasy football is paying your bills right now. Fantasy football is, I think, the the biggest factor for the growth of the NFL in the last 10 years. Just give us some accurate news. That's all I'm asking. Just give us some accurate news. All right. Look, we'd love it. It'd be great. <laughs> just just stop it. Do you know how hard it was last night to try to figure out what was going to happen in the, the Green Bay backfield? Yeah. I mean, I was sitting there. I was scouring everything I could to give a report to people. Then it comes out Don Jackson's going to start. Then it's like Niall Davis is active, but it's going to be kick returns, not a lot of carries. Ty Montgomery. I mean, and It'll- then Don Jackson gets hurt. Oh, Professor X. I mean, Don Jackson went from the practice squad to the greatest luck in the world to losing your shot there because was, of an injury. Did you did you get to see the entire game? Most of uh, it? Yeah, I think so. So you saw the shot that that Professor X took? He just got blown up. I don't you know. really want to call him Professor X, and nobody bad, knows why. Very bad, because his middle name's Xavier. <laughs> yeah, he actually goes by Xavier on... Uh, if you added him in, on ESPN, he's Don Xavier Jackson. They changed that. They pulled that out. What? Yeah, now he's just John Why? Jackson. They pulled his middle name out. If your name Gotta is... Gotta keep it tight. Look, if your name is Don Jackson, look, I mean, that's a that's a, just a plain name. Sure. You got to get Xavier in there. Yeah. That's sweet. That that improves your name 300%. Yeah. You can drop the Xavier when you go into insurance sales. <laughs> All right. Odell Beckham Jr. in or out? Going in. Julian Edelman? In. Ty Hilton. <laughs> Did I say Ty? <laughs> oh, in honor of Jason. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. This is how uh, fast I'm going through this. T.Y. Hilton. He returned to practice. He's uh, he's missing a couple of practices every week, but he's expected to play. That might have been my worst moment on the show. Uh, by the way, Jason did want us to tell people that, in his opinion, buying low on Alshon Jeffrey might be a good idea because if Cutler, yes, if Cutler yes. returns, oh, yeah. you know how Cutler is with Alshon. Yeah, that's that was a great point. Thank you for bringing Wing that up. Wing it, sling it. You know, Alshon will have a, uh, some upside. He hasn't scored this year, though, and he's making everybody's – Eyes rolling to the back. But of the I head. bet you can get him super cheap. Uh Will Fuller. Well, he's expected to play, but Denver. Denver. Jordan Matthews. Full practice. I expect him to play. Terrell Pryor. I don't think that he's going to play, and if he does play, limited. Limited with he's been missing time with a hamstring, missing practices. I. Uh, he's. I think he's a guy I would pivot away from. Okay. All right, um, Robert Woods is not practicing today. He was in, and he's been in a boot yeah. for the last couple not days. Not looking good for Robert Woods. Uh, a few more names here. Alan Hearns? I think he's going to play. Deshaun Jackson. Th- this is the big question for me. d incredibly juicy matchup, but missing practices. Today, I have not gotten an update if he practiced today or not, but I mean, when you miss Wednesday and Thursday, you you got to assume the – the worst you are he will at least have to plan for it okay 
Um, other wide receivers of note, Dorsett. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah. I said of note. Here. Steve Smith. Yeah, I don't think he's going to play. Um, John Brown? I think he'll play. I think he's, I think he's going to play. How excited are you about John Brown, though, this week against Seattle? I'm not. All right, tight ends, Jimmy Graham. I, Jimmy Graham should be in. He'll Jimmy be Graham in. will just not practice at all, which, to be fair, I mean, Seattle's giving him the time off, which he probably needs on it's that smart. Yes. Smart. He can go all out. Uh, Tyler Eifert. Tyler Eifert. Welcome back. Welcome yeah. back. Look, welcome he practiced. Back. I think he's going to play. And if I have Tyler Eifert, I've been stashing him, and he's active. Unless something very negative comes out this weekend, I'm going to play Tyler Eifert against the Browns. I'm going to hope for that touchdown or two. It helps Dalton. Yes, tremendously. Jordan Reed. Uh, Jordan Reed's been a very curious case with his concussion. <laughs> he well, cause he came he, out and said he was hiding it. Yeah, I mean, I'd not good. It's that's a tough situation for players. But he he practiced limited. He had the no contact jersey on. He didn't practice Thursday. He's seeing a specialist today. I doubt that he will play though. But the the thing with Reed is if he's a if he is allowed to play, you play him. He's just it's, it's the rule eighty six. Yeah, I mean he's just full bore too. I mean this is not something that you if he's a you know if he's active. Uh, yeah, it, you play him. He's not nursing a hamstring. Right, Julius Thomas. <laughs> I uh, he'll probably who play. cares? Yeah, Eric Ebron. Nope. Charles Clay. Yes. And Charles Clay, if for those who are looking for just a gross, barfy tight end that you got to play, if Robert Woods does not play, Charles Clay has been catching passes. I think he's an okay start. All right. Now, uh, last week, uh, we do this every Friday, or not every Friday, but once we do it every week. Uh, we play on the draft app. And last week, we it was me versus you versus Jason. Yes. And uh, five players <clears throat> per team. And I'm happy to say, on the back of my running backs, decent running backs last yeah, who week. Did you... LaShawn McCoy. You had the slippery fish. David Johnson. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I had them combined with Cam Newton, you... A.J. Green, and Amari Cooper. So you benched the rest of your team, and you still beat me. Uh, I beat Jason by 14 because he actually had Drew Brees in that monster game and Odell Beckham Jr. And then, Mike, I doubled up on your score. Yeah. You, had, you did have Lamar Miller, but you got nothing out of Mr. John Brown. I went with the Palmer. You went with double Browns. I went with the Palmer Brown stack. And so, yeah. Every week we jump into the Play Draft app. It's awesome. Yeah, it lets us keep that kind of preseason fun of drafting a team. It's not salary cap daily fantasy sports. It's drafting, and so we do that every week. Mike and I just this morning did a head to head. So you can do it in leagues. You can do it head to head. We did a head to head this morning, and I'd like to take a, a little poll. From sure. the listeners on wh whose team's going to win, I'm hoping to. I think I'm almost undefeated against you both all year when we've uh, done head to head. Almost, except I've I've certainly won. One Maybe it's the, just Jason. Maybe I pyramids. just shut Jason down. So today, uh, we did a head to head, and, and I, I after the failure of my Palmer Brown stack, said, "Screw this! I'm going chalk." Yeah, I'm going chalk, baby. <clears throat> all right, so uh, at quarterback, I have Bortles. You have Brady. Yep. We'll give you the advantage. Check there. the advantage. Uh, at running backs, oh, goodness, I didn't see your running backs. Yep. You have Love Bell and David Johnson. <laughs> I have DeMarco Murray and Devonta Freeman. Now, Murray is my one of my favorite matchups of the week. He's got Indianapolis. So is Freeman. I mean, I, I, and like, Freeman. I like your running backs a lot. I just happen to – You have the names, yes. but they're going up again. David Johnson, Seattle, Love Bell against New England. I think it's close. And then wide receivers, I went with a couple of great matchups. Mike Evans versus San Francisco and Allen Robinson against Oakland. Yeah, you you fully went matchups. Like That's you still true. have you all have, of them are matchups. You still have names. I went felt like I went matchups. You went last pure week. names. So I'm just taking the big Brady, guns. Bell, and Johnson. And then your wide receivers are AJ Green and Julio Jones. I, I went to the president and I said, Give me the coats. Give me the Because I need the big guns. You got the launch codes? Yes. So uh we'll see. Who wins this week? I'm curious. I, I think people are going to vote for you with those names. But maybe they, right maybe they can see between the lines. Maybe they're on my level. So, hey, if you want to play with us on the draft app, you can go over to playdraft.com uh, slash footballers slash ballers. Yeah, I think, there that, you go. I think that's the one. Uh, you can also just download the app and, and put the promo code footballers in, and it will add you to uh, all of our leagues. Yeah, the, the fantasy footballers leagues, which are – they're the hot ticket, man. There's a lot of people, just a lot of uh, 
knowledgeable players that they go test your might. Very fun, and, and the uh, there's some cool modes in there too. I was looking this morning. You can play like multi round drafts, and you can also do what you call expert drafts. Yeah, where they'll you can, take you, the top players out. You where you would kill my strategy from this week. Sure, sure. So uh, we're gonna get into the rest of the matchups, the fantasy forecast. Before we do that, we do want to thank the sponsor of today's show, our good friends over at Harry's. All right, what do you love most about Harry's, Mike? What do you think? What well, does your wife love the most about say, Harry's? Uh, what I love about Harry's is that my wife enjoys them. Yeah, yeah, and I, for me, it's the closeness of the shave. It's smooth. It's comfortable. They're a high quality. You know, Jason said last week the handle, man. You yeah. just know it's high quality. And look, comparing them to any other shaving solution, in terms of quality, yep, so much better. Price, so much better. And now they've uh, they've upgraded. Their five blade razors now include a softer flex hinge for a more comfortable glide, a trimmer blade for hard-to-reach places, a lubricating strip, a textured handle for more control when it's wet, and they're still just $2 a blade compared to $4 a blade that that's, you pay that's high tech in the drugstore. So they are so confident in the quality of their blades that they will send you their popular free trial set, which comes with a razor, a five-blade cartridge, and shaving gel. It's free when you sign up for a shave plan. All you have to do is pay shipping. Plus, there's a special offer for fans of the Fantasy Footballers you enter the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout, and you get a post-shave balm Ooh. added to your order for free. My wife likes when I wear the post-shave balm. Yes. Go to harrys.com right now and enter the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout to claim your free trial set and post-shave balm. That's harrys.com, code FOOTBALLERS. Let's get into the rest of the matchups. Fantasy Forecast. I believe you mean the first half of the matchups all right i made some mistakes <laughs> yesterday me and ty hilton me and ty, ty went out there goodness somebody has to make up for jason not being here and apparently i volunteered today he leaves an aura <laughs> an aura of uh stupidity grammatical and <laughs> spelling issues um yeah. nothing i look i need some help in these matchups all right let's i need i need to overcome jordan howard i'm sure there are people out there that need to overcome Cameron Meredith or Brian Hoyer. Well, I'm not sure if you're going to do it with the Ravens and the Jets matchup. Is that where we're starting? The, the wise guys have this as a 40 point, 40 and a half points over under. They do not expect much to happen. But even with that, I think you have a couple good fantasy options in here. Terrence West is emerging as a stud. He lo it's He's passing the eye test. Now he's got the opportunity. He's getting the workload. He got in the passing game last week. I mean, he's, he's passing the thigh test too. <laughs> the, got them big the, old thighs. The MJD thigh getting test. Into the, getting into the end zone. Yeah, I mean, he's playing. You know what? I can't think of anybody in preseason like two years ago. We talked about this. Ingram looking special in preseason. Different players. Yeah. Uh, this preseason, it was Terrence West. Yeah, absolutely. You could see it. I mean, we we had all you know we, we were planning and and hoping for that Dixon takeover. I don't think it's going to happen now. In Terrence West is the reason. Oh, Dixon's simply a handcuff. Yes. I completely agree. And you go over to the other side. Forte and Powell versus the number one running defense. No. Good not luck. Good. Not good. Uh, we've talked pretty at length about the Jets and the circumstances behind center. You're not starting Geno Smith. I still like Brandon Marshall a lot, though. Sure. I mean, I, it, it, yeah, because you have to. I mean, you're going to throw the ball. You're going to be, you know, your past defense has been bad. You haven't played well, and, you know, the Ravens, yeah, look, it's going to be Marshall. He's big enough to, to do it against Patrick Peterson when you know it's only him. I think Marshall's fine. I think everybody else is stay clear. <laughs> you mean, you look at, look at the numbers. The Ravens' offense is scoring 10 points a game. That, that's bad, right? That's 29th in the league. And so we take a look over to the Jets. The Jets are scoring eight points. <laughs> Eight points a game. That puts them at dead last. So, like I said, not a lot of offense, but there's at least a couple guys who I'm okay playing. How difficult is it for uh, their owner to sign the check each week for R Ryan Fitzpatrick? Uh, Do you think that that's one of those, my pin is blue, like you can barely, <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick's my quarter. B -b 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 -b. Uh, not good. Hey, you, you've heard my take. You deserved it. So, with – um. With Steve Smith likely to miss is, you know, is Wallace – to me, Wallace would be the play here yeah, on the wide receiver core because if Flacco plays and you have Wallace 
and that's they want to take if, some downfield shots. That's a the Jets Flacco secondary plays. hasn't been good. Yeah, another low over under. Another game sure to be uh, not as great for fantasy as you'd hope. The Vikings and the Eagles. By the way, I'm I'm positive, pretty positive that the Vikings played the they do the Bears and Matt Barkley next week. The, yes, that might be the first negative yardage game in the history of the NFL where a team. I mean, I I've never said trade for a defense. <laughs> But if you need but a win, I, I, if you need a win. Look, the Vikings are already the best defense in the league, and then watch that be a trap game. Matt Barkley comes out and smokes them. No, no not going to no. happen. Man, my almost upset looked great in the third quarter when it was 10-6. to six. Well, it looked great until Horry broke his yeah. arm, man. All right, Vikings, Eagles. Eagles, favor, uh, Eagles are underdogs by three points, 40 point over under. You've got Bradford. You've got Wentz. You have the committee of McKinnon and Asiata taking on the committee of Matthews and Sproles and Smallwood and Barner. Oh, my. Uh, I steer clear of pretty much all running backs in this game. I mean, you have two defenses that have been, uh, you know, the Vikings obviously elite. The yes. Eagles have been pretty good. This yeah, game's I, in Philly. I still believe in uh, that McKinnon and Asiata are okay plays this week. I mean, you have the Eagles, they have they started hot. I'm not sure that their rankings are – a complete story, a complete picture of their actual defense. I think they're good, but I don't think that they're great. All so right. I'm, so what I'm, are the storylines from this game for fantasy owners to pay attention to? Because there's one guy I want to talk about. Let's hear it. Doriel Green Beckham. All right. Snap counts rising. Involvement rising. I'm not saying breakout. I'm saying pay attention because if he can pass Aguilar, which I think he can, on the depth chart, right. all of a sudden he may be – you know, the target on the outside. Yeah. I, I, I can see you don't agree. No, no, I, I I don't disagree with that, but I'm not a – it's – I don't know that I'm even going to stash him. Maybe that's just a situation no, you just keep where, one eye on him. That's a mental stash. You keep one eye on him. All right, the Vikings defense has tackled opponents for a loss on 7.6% of rushing attempts this season. Oh, uh, Ryan Matthews, this is, this is a situation. The Eagles, on the other hand – are now is that right? Do you see those stats there? I do. They both have been. Well, they, it says that the Eagles have been better at that than the Vikings. Yeah, they're, they're the Eagles are tackling opponents for a loss on twenty percent of rushing attempts. I mean, that's. Yeah, I think McKinnon. I mean, he's the only guy that I think about here in this game. You don't think of I don't want to roll out the touchdown or bust Asiata. He wasn't touchdown or bust, though. He was the actual efficient running back last week. Rudolph and Ertz. What do you think of those guys? I like Rudolph. Uh, I, I know that matchup is is not great. I mean, we have, we also haven't even touched on the revenge game for Sam Bradford. Does he want to pour it on? Of course he wants to pour it on, but can he pour it on? No, he can't pour it on. <laughs> I mean, you got Diggs. Uh, you have Thiel, uh, Thielen coming out. From yep. last week, the big game. Do you expect anything from him? Thielen, it, it, if Diggs is active, then Thielen returns to his original role, which is he'll get a couple passes. I, I think what I got out of that five minutes spent on that game is that. Yeah, let's let's go to fun games. Yeah, there's just nothing nothing there. All right, the Colts take on the Titans. You know, Marcus Mariota has been has vaulted into the number eight spot in fantasy leagues. He's heating up. He has a 38 point week, a 39 point week in the last uh, in six point leagues in the last two weeks. Takes on Andrew Luck here at home. I'm still not sold on Mariota. No, I like him this week because I think you know the Colts can score, but I am not sold on the fact that he's not going to crap my team. Yeah, I because he's had these matchups. He had Oakland right. at home and didn't do it. I love the the running attack and the fact he's had seven carries for over 60 yards two straight weeks. I love the idea of, of streaming him this week. I'm totally comfortable with that. I just think that there is more risk. I was telling Mike this yesterday. There's more risk with Marcus Mariota than there is with a guy like Blake Bortles, in my opinion, who I just feel like at home, Bortles against Oakland, the baseline is going to be a little higher for him than Mariota. Do you – Agree with that? I, no, I completely agree that the 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 potential the, the on the range of outcomes for Mariota, there's a very low floor. We've we've just seen it too many times, so I'm, I I completely agree. Right now, the Titans are seventh against the run, tenth against the pass. You've got Andrew Luck coming into the building. Do you expect kind of a mid-level game from Luck? What are you thinking I here? I still think Andrew Luck will be fine. It's 
uh, Andrew Luck is, as always, though, when he's up against a good defense, it's if you're a fantasy player, don't watch the game. For, don't watch because the game the hoping pain? for Andrew Luck because it's going to be excruciating, most likely. Uh, Andrew Luck has been uh, great at one quarter of getting your entire production, which is still fine. I mean, he's still usable for fantasy. I think he's still a good option. Hilton, I think, is a fine play despite missing all the, the practice. Now, then you have Chester Rogers, who kind of uh, showed up a little bit last week. But I, I don't think he's... I, I wouldn't put him as a sneaky start or anything like that. Jack Doyle was my start of the week at tight yeah, end, so I like, like him in this game. You're, you're starting Gore, you're starting Murray on the other side. Uh, you're starting Delaney Walker most likely if he's on your roster. So the question, the one other question that has come up to me this week from listeners <clears throat> is just asking about Kendall Wright and his involvement in the offense. Now, we've seen Wright be very effective when he's healthy. Now, that's been rare. Last week, he didn't play a large amount of snaps, but he did have – he caught the bomb from Mariota – he certainly helps Mariota to have him out there. Somebody that when Mariota started as a rookie, Wright was his guy. Right. Wright was his man. So does Wright being back, is this another thing like Green Beckham where you, you've got him in the corner of your eye at all, or is this something that could hurt Delaney Walker? Yeah, I, th I think it just more siphons away. I am not, I'm not looking to add him. I'm Chargers, Falcons. We're moving on. Chargers, Falcons. Falcons are. Oh, I was the the last thing I was going to say for the the Colts is I think we're approaching the time that if you want to stash Dante Moncrief, it's not a bad idea. Yes, I agree with you. Chargers, Falcons. Falcons are six and a half point favorites at home. This is a uh, a fifty three and a half point over under. Holy crap, fifty three. Yeah, this is a monster game. This is a game where I'd be starting my Rivers, my Ryan. My Freeman, my Coleman, my Gordon, my Julio, my Henry. It sounds like a poem. Um, I think my Ryan. You oh, know, Ryan, Jason, my Ryan. Yeah, I think Jason's t uh, into Tyrell Williams this week. He is. Um, gave his explanation yesterday. Has to deal with Marcus Trufant. Maybe covering Benjamin up a little bit more this week. I, I don't mind that take. Uh, this is not a good defense. Uh, the Falcons, 26 against the pass. Rivers is capable of going on the road and putting up huge numbers. That's the one thing that Rivers definitely can do. And you don't have uh, good defenses here. Now, here's one of the reasons the Falcons have been successful. Julio Jones has averaged 21.2 yards per reception. That's first in the league. Well, the 300-yard uh, the game certainly helped that. Well, he didn't catch all 300 on one pass. 75 of it was, and then there I, was another large that's chunk. That's the point. The point he's is chunking. that he's chunking this wow, year. he's Julio. They, no, he's not been this before. He's not. They don't go long. This was the problem and the last beef year, yes. with Matt Ryan last yes. year is they're not going long to Julio enough. Now they're taking shots down the field with Julio. He's getting behind the defense because he's Julio. I'm just saying it, it, it puts you in a position where the yardage is up there for Ryan. He's leading the league. I think he's, you know, he's the number one fantasy wide receiver right now, and we're not debating whether you're starting him or not. It's just interesting to see that they're going downfield with him a little bit more. Has yeah. to give you confidence. Well, you have combination of that plus the Chargers defense are allowing almost 11 yards per completion, which is actually low. That's the that's the something got to give matchup there. Right. So you have Julio averaging a ton. The Chargers are, are not allowing a lot per completion, but they've also lost pieces of their secondary. So you're confident in everybody in this game. I, I don't see anybody I'd sit down other than you know. What about the tight ends? Hunter Henry. No, I'm all aboard. Gates. All both aboard. Uh, yeah, I'd play them both. I think Henry I like more. Henry's been hyper efficient. I'm I'm into I'm into Henry. <laughs> oh Henry. That's what you should have said. Oh Henry, my Henry. Oh the candy bar. Because that would have been made me hungry. So I look. There's not a lot of question marks in that game. No, me. it's uh, just a lot. Yeah, Tevin Coleman started the week from Jason. Yep. You had. Um, yeah, yeah. I think you you've got everybody there. I would not disagree. All right, the Buccaneers and the 49ers. Mike, I know you're leaning on Jameis Winston this week. I'm I'm leaning on Jameis, and I'm leaning on Jacquez Rogers. Do you think um, now the 49ers, this game's almost a uh, a toss-up here. Yeah. In San Francisco, the 49ers fair. only one-point underdogs at home, despite their struggles. You're not going to have, um, you know, you're going to have Mike Davis and Sean Drone in the backfield with Carlos Hyde out. You're going to have Rodgers and Barber in the backfield with Doug Martin and Sims out. To me, look, I think Evans has the potential to have a monster week. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, you have – this is the, the weird situation where you look at the 49ers' pass defense. They're seventh in the league. What? 
What? That's because they because they're thirty second in rushing. Defense. Yeah, that's why those numbers can be deceiving. I mean, yes. it's not like they're great. They just no one has to pass against them. Yeah. They run against them. That being said, you know Evans is leading the league in targets per game, twelve point two targets per game. Yeah, and you're, they're still susceptible. They can be destroyed by Mike Evans. I'm now Cameron Bright, top ten guy this week. Yeah, I mean you have to put him back there. We've I, I know last or the last time they played was a complete clunker, but before that he was getting the targets. He's getting red zone uh, targets. He's getting end zone targets, and now they've lost Vincent Jackson. You have Humphreys pronounced with an Humphreys taking over as the wide receiver too. I think that was an upgrade for Cameron Brait. Humphreys is supposed to stay in the slot though. Oh, is he? They're not moving him outside. Really? Really. Oh. That's what I read. So, um, need to monitor that. Humphreys has had some good games this year. What do you make of Mike Davis in the backfield replacing Carlos Hyde? Does he get a workload that sustains fantasy production? Would you start him? Would you flex him? If you are, if you were going to play Carlos Hyde, you're in a, uh, a tight situation. I think Mike Davis is an okay play. I think that he will get the volume. Carlos Hyde has been very solid for fantasy and not – not particularly because he's been super efficient or just a out of this world fantastic running back volume. We talk about on the show all the time that opportunity is the key to fantasy football, and I think Mike Davis has a very solid opportunity here against a, a middle of the pack rushing defense. I think he's an okay play. And speaking of an okay play, if you're desperate at quarterback, maybe you're in a two quarterback league. Maybe your your waiver wire is barren and you don't know what to do. Colin Kaepernick against a a struggling pass defense, it could it could certainly be worse than this matchup at home for Colin Kaepernick. I'm just, just well throwing it out there into the into the world. Well, look, I mean, last week against Buffalo in Buffalo, he still he threw for a touchdown and he put up 66 yards on the ground. Yep. And so then you're you're talking about 23 fantasy points. Say also known as uh, 125 passing yards. Right, the, the equivalent. Yeah. On the ground. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I think Mike's explanation is the best. No, 150. Yeah. I did my math wrong. One. F- it could Jeez. be worse. It yeah. could be worse. Let's talk about the Patriots and the Steelers. The Patriots coming up against the Landry Jones Express. <laughs> beep beep. Toot toot. <laughs> Sounds like the Beasley. Yeah. I mean. Is the air out of the sails of all Steeler owners right now? Hey, do I need to pull it's, Crossroads back up? But no, we're, we're not at that level. We're not at that level. Let's let's see what Landry Jones can do. Another year in the system, performed I think okay last year when he had to come in. So for, tell me what you're doing with those players. Though. Sure. So Antonio Brown, he's still a must start. We have at least one great game with Landry Jones and Antonio Brown. So there's at least some history that they can get it done. Now against the Billy B, I don't. Bill Belichick loves to scheme at one guy out. Like this is something that he does frequently. He picks what he thinks is the uh, the guy that has to be removed. But the question for the the Steelers is: Would he consider that Antonio Brown, or would he consider that Le'Veon Bell? I mean, so that's. I don't think you can shut them both down really for fantasy purposes. I think Le'Veon Bell is a full go. I expect big workload. You have D'Angelo Williams. Banged up, missed in practice. Maybe we get some more Le'Veon Bell actually playing running back, which would be uh, nice. I, I like when he plays. I like when he sure. plays running back. But for like Sammy Coates, I'm not playing him. Eli Rogers, though, Eli Rogers, I think is has some sneaky PPR potential here. We saw him get uh, some nice amount of targets last week. And if Landry Jones is needs the underneath, if he if he's not reading the defense well and he just has to get rid of the ball, that's Eli Rogers' role on this offense. So if you're struggling for a wide receiver three in a PPR situation, Eli Rogers, like I said with Kaepernick, it could be worse. Yeah, this is a game where I think the Patriots are going to find themselves ahead. And so, you know, playing defensive formations to simply prevent against, you know, coming back, it, it worries me a little bit about Bell. I think he's going to have to make his hay in the passing game. I think Rogers is an – an interesting play there. You know, the Steelers defense, they only sacked the quarterback once out of every 31 pass attempts, which is dead last in the league. <laughs> the NFL average is one in every 16. And so Brady's not going to have pressure on him. He's going to be able to go to work. And, you know, the way it's looking with Gronkowski, I say, does that, that James to, White, that has to bump up the, 
like Gronk and even maybe Hogan. And you you see Edelman used You're a lot. You're saying going downfield. Yeah, you see Edelman used a lot when when Brady knows he's going to be under pressure and they have to just be very methodical, the surgeon Patriots offense. But we have not seen that yet. If you have Edelman, are you waiting for a game before you roll him into the lineup or are you just rolling still, him out there? I still play him. He was speaking about his lack of statistics and just basically saying, at least his take was, I'm fine physically. This offense goes to different people on different weeks. Sometimes it's your week, sometimes it's not. Ooh, that that sounds like a Patriots answer of Julian Elman is pissed off. Maybe. <laughs> All right, Mike, you're going to be at this one. You're doing it right. Sunday night football. I was going to be. Yeah, hey, my pops usurped you. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you, you gave me a ticket. My dad called... Give me back on his tickets. No, I gave it back. He yeah. actually, your dad actually was nice. He was like, no, you can go. And I was like, no, I'm not taking your ticket. <laughs> the Seahawks take on the Cardinals in Arizona. You know, the Cardinals are two point favorites at home, which might be a surprise for some people with the Seahawks at four and one Cardinals sitting there at uh, three and three, three and three. This is a game with a 43 and a half point over under. So we're not talking a high scoring affair. I think we'd all agree that these are two very good defenses. Um, so what, what are the fantasy decisions being made here? We know David Johnson's not coming out of your lineup. Never. Um, I want to ask you about a couple guys on the other side of the ball. Kristen, Michael, Doug Baldwin, Jimmy Graham. How do you view those three guys this week? And, and speak maybe at length a little bit more about Baldwin. And is he going to get back into the swing of, of being what he was last year? I saw a stat about Russell Wilson's passing numbers when he targets Doug Baldwin compared to any other receiver, and they're so much higher, higher passer rating, right. higher completion percentage. I don't know if Doug Baldwin could get it going this week. I mean, I, th I think he's still a fine play. You you put him in there, but this the, the offense is a little is not what we saw at the end of last year when they had to go to these really quick passes, and Doug Baldwin was the the extreme benefactor. We've seen the woke one soaking up. You know, nearly half of the touchdowns for the Seahawks. I know Jason wants to pump the brakes on Kristen Michael this week. I, I, for me personally, I don't have that same approach. We've seen the, the Cardinals, you know, give up points to, to running backs Their Their defense has tightened up in the last couple of weeks, but before the, the Matt Forte and the jets debacle, last well, they week, gave nothing up to Gurley. Right. But I'm saying, but in the middle of that, you had Carlos Hyde who, had had a nice game. They gave up over twenty three points to the running back. So I'm just I'm just saying that I'm I'm not benching Kristen Michael. Maybe you you want to lower your expectations, but I think you still play him. So here here's a narrative too that I want to get into. We just talked about the fact that the Steelers only average one sack every thirty attempts. Basically, the Seahawks are near the top of the league. They they average a sack every ten point four pass attempts, which means there's going to be pressure on Carson Palmer. So who's the beneficiary in the wide receiver core? Because to me, I think Larry Fitzgerald's got to be at the top of that list, especially yep. in PPR leagues. You know, Larry plays inside, in the slot, those quick outs, the, the run through the air type of passes that you saw Ty Montgomery run last night where, you know, it's two yards and an out. I think if he has to get the ball out of his hands, Larry's kind of the number one target there. Also, possibly David Johnson in the passing game. Yep, I would completely agree with that. I don't – I'm not going to play Michael Floyd in this contest – I prefer not to play John Brown in this contest, but we saw Fitzgerald last year going to Seattle. We all remember, well, I guess the Drew Stan dance was on a on a Ellington run. Yeah, but but, oh, yeah. but Larry had himself a game. Yeah, Drew Stan looked like he was doing a little bit of that on that David Johnson run down the sideline last week. I saw him getting pretty pumped up. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think that covers that game pretty well. Let's move on to the Monday night game, and then I'm going to talk about Daily Dose here in a second. The Monday night game is the Texans at the Broncos. The Texans at the Broncos. Broncos heavy favorites in Denver, but the game has only a 40-point over-under. Because you have a couple of pretty stout defenses and pretty – it's less about the defenses to me, and it's more about the fact that the offenses just aren't – there's nothing alluring about them, right? I, no, mean, I completely agree. You know, Simeon should be better at home this week, coming back off the injury, but the Texans have been very good against the pass. And so, to me – I, I am wondering this. Let me ask you this. I talked about Doug Baldwin. I'm, I'm facing this decision in a league. Would you start Anderson and Booker? Ooh. Because the because the, the, the Texans, Texans are bad. The Texans give it up on the ground. I think they're going to give it up on the ground in this game 
from a yardage perspective, they haven't given up a ton of touchdowns to the running back, but I think uh, they're so good against the pass. I just wonder if this game's going to be won on the ground. If you're owning, if you own Anderson and Booker, I probably wouldn't play Booker yeah. over Baldwin, but it was an interesting thought that it came into my head. Yeah, I think you can pivot that to just, is Booker becoming a flex-worthy guy? After last week, we saw him, you know, bust off a huge, a couple huge runs. The numbers still say no because there's no volume there. Right, and th- single that's, digits. That's where I lean. Is Booker is not there yet? Maybe he gets there after this game it, with with a so, <laughs> crazy. Like it's crazy how that's this is a decent matchup for running backs against the Texans. Yeah, while well, JJ Watt is out. Just saying, it's it's so here. Crazy. <laughs> how many pass attempts or how many completions happened last night for Aaron Rodgers? 39? 39. 39. So if you combine the average receptions given up by these two teams, it's 17 and 18. So you're talking about combined, they average less total receptions or you know completions given right. up than Aaron Rodgers accomplished on his own last night. So I'm not expecting big things out of Hopkins or Fuller, Thomas or Sanders. If you have to pick them, I'm picking the Denver side of things. Sure. Um at home, and but I, they're not excited here. And not excited. I mean, how can you get excited for anybody except for – this is going to sound hilarious, but um, you know, Houston, Ryan Griffin seems to have fallen behind uh, C.J. Fedorowicz. Yeah, I, I, I think he's part of that Barfy tight end group that yeah. you can play. Yeah, so what else in this game do you want to talk about? I'll just address the, the question of a lot of people are saying, what do I do with DeAndre Hopkins? Unless you have, for me, unless there's a clear-cut option – like you have a, it's it okay. It's kind of weird, but you're talking flex. Let's say you have a guy like Jacquez Rogers, where you know the matchup is so good. I'm okay going Rogers. Other than that, I'm gonna leave Hopkins in and just hope for the you get 50 and a touchdown. All right, well, just, just personally. Before for this we one. before we close out the show, a couple of updates to the news from earlier. Uh, Joe Flacco did return to practice on Friday, so if you are a Wallace streamer this week, that has to make you happy. Um, if, basically if you're on the Ravens, you know what I mean? This is, you don't want to lose your quarterback. Welcome to Brian Hoare from last night. <laughs> we, we, have, we have more, more shade. R- yeah. More shady news. <laughs> He's now questionable. Uh, look, Rex it, Ryan said, we're not ruling him out at all. The fact that he's not doubtful and he is in fact in the upper 50% of questionable coming off of two days ago or yesterday when it was, he's going to miss weeks. The problem now is that if he's active, does he get a reduced workload? Yeah, probably. I would think he would. We we, we saw what happened with LaShawn McCoy last year. You should tell people year. what happened to your team this past week. <laughs> Mike right. went out and he and he spent All right, so two weeks yeah. two weeks ago. I kind of, we, I kind of alluded to this that I bought Doug Martin, but two weeks ago, uh, I have I've kept getting passed. I, I kept missing out on trade offers. I my team is at a, at a point where it has to improve for our league if I'm going to contend for a championship. Two weeks ago, I saw an opportunity where a team uh, has a a very losing record. They look like they're about to sell. And I went and I bought T.Y. Hilton and Doug Martin for the long haul to improve my team. Since that time, so my running backs became LaShawn McCoy and Doug Martin. You know what happened to those two guys. Sure. T.Y. Hilton, then he returned to practice today, but he was not practicing at all earlier and people, the the news was, it, you can't you can't guarantee that T Y Hilton's going to play. I have Jordan Reed, who is concussion, who is uh concussed and maybe not play. It just like this this horrific change. You almost of went with Hoyer. Yes, and then on the kind of a uh, I mean, I had Winston ahead of my ranking, so I said, okay, I'm sticking with this, even though you had the Green Bay secondary matchup problem. So I so I narrowly avoided that. But it's just been a disaster for the injury front for my team. Joe Hayden, unlikely to play. Giddy up, A.J. Green. Yeah. Terrell Pryor, questionable for week seven. Did not practice at all this week. Um, really don't think I can trust him. I'm going to be on my team. I'm going to be playing Doug Baldwin over him. Right. So, all right. That does it for today's. Well, we had. We, wait, you got something else? Well, we did not address the elephant, which is apparently Jason was hanging out with Chris Meany. Who Meaty came down with? Oh my goodness! Yes, Chris Meaty was was uh, sick, so we cannot get him in. However, no daily dose on the show. However, go over to the fantasyfootballers.com. We've got you connected. We got some FanDuel articles going up. Yeah, we have picks for this week. So do not fear. 
DFS players. And if you have not tried out FanDuel and you want to get in on it, FanDuel.com slash footballers. Get some free entries. Yep. Thanks for joining us this week. Make sure you tune into Mike's Periscope on Sunday morning. Check it's out an hour early. Check out jointhefoot.com if you want to be a part of our community and chat fantasy with over 3,000 listeners of the show. And we will be back next week. Take, it, take care. And don't forget to check out Fantasy Jocks for trophies. Thank Use you the promo for code listening footballer. to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.